मधुपातारितायते मधुक्षर सिंधव मध्वे न सतोषधी मधुनक्तमुतोषसे मधुमत्तिवगुमज मधुदौरस्तु नीता मधुमस्पतिर्मधुमाघुमस्तु सूर्य मध्वीर्गाभवंत न ओम शांति 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 मे द विंड्स ब्लो स्वीटली मे द रिवर्स ब्लो स्वीटली मे डेज एंड नाइट्स बी स्वीट टू अस मे द जस्ट ऑफ द अर्थ बी स्वीट टू अस मे द ट्रीज एंड प्लांट्स बी स्वीट टू अस मे द सन शाइन ऑन अस स्वीटली मे ऑल बीइंग्स बी हैप्पी मे ऑल बीइंग्स बी पीसफुल मे ऑल बीइंग्स बी ब्लिसफुल ओम पीस 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 बी टू We are studying Bhagavad Gita, chapter seven. We shall start with verse fifteen. In the previous verse, Krishna mentioned, "My Maya is divine." It is very difficult to transcend this Maya. Those who take refuge in me, I help them to cross this turbulent ocean of Maya. Then this that he said in this verse fourteen, in the fifteen and sixteen, he is going to tell us there are two types of people live in this world. The first group live. God lead godless life. They don't need any God. The second group lead God-centered life. Now the first group says, "Why do you need God? God is not necessary. <coughs> Why?" Why do not see God? The unseen God, He is not in my life, not in my family. Hmm. I better trust. As you have seen in on the dollar bill, in God we trust. So let me believe in dollar God, which brings happiness. That they believe. Lot of comfort, enjoyment. Money can buy anything you like in this world. So I don't need unseen God. This visible God is quite enough for me. That is the view of the first group of people in this world. Money. I can have enjoyment, my family, home, car, whatever I need. Money can supply. The second group says it is not possible to live in this world without God's grace. Look, Jesus said, "Man cannot live by bread alone. Only food and enjoyment is not enough. People get tired, bored." Second, man, as Christ said. He cannot worship God and Mammon at the same time. Moreover, the Mahabharata says, "What is the difference between man and animal? We eat, they eat; we sleep, they sleep; we beget children, they beget children. In these three aspects, there is no difference between man and God, man and animal." We have fear. They have fear. Only in one place there is a difference. You can practice dharma. You can practice religion. 
you have power of discrimination animal beings do not have that faculty dharme na hina pashu bhi samana ha gyane na hina pashu bhi samana ha without dharma without knowledge human beings are like animals we are looking for happiness all human beings are seeking happiness happiness or is happiness those who have too much money they have fear of losing money fear of robbers fear of cheat this only happiness is very temporary we know it the the says they rotate in a cyclic order chakravat parivartante dukhani cha sukhani cha e dukh and shukh happiness and misery rotate in a cyclic order happiness misery happiness misery in this way all the human beings you see no one is all the time happy or all the time miserable they rotate so we are looking for permanent happiness upanishad tells us bhumai va sukham nalpe sukham asti happiness is only in the infinite not in the finite in this this world is finite limited why is the, how can i get permanent happiness all the time happy that is not possible in this world krishna malraji said to arjuna anitta masukam lokam imam prapta vajasvamam anitta this world is temporary impermanent asukam full of misery so worship me if you want permanent happiness that is god's world and happiness and krishna also mentioned in the second chapter the happiness and misery they come misery will come please forbear there is no way to get rid of it this misery comes due to our karma our karma brings happiness our karma brings him misery the first group seek god self when they are in trouble when there are natural natural calamities they seek help when there are terminal diseases they seek help i was watching the summer terrible flood in colorado sorry flood in colorado fire in yosemite national forest fire in new jersey so many homes so many people are crying it never happened in our area in colorado we are helpless at that time we seek help god help god help we at that time we seek some supernatural being to help us all atheism disappears there is a saying there are no atheists on turbulent airplanes you know everybody at that time pray there is no other way finally people understand that oh lord you are the goti you are the god you are the support you are the witness you are the abode you are our refuge you are our friend goti bharta prabhu sakshi nivasa sharanam surit krishna says this is the way you can escape this misery in this world krishna farda says mame baje prabaddante mayame tam taruntite do you know what how i feel about it here is a piece of black coal 
just coal, regular coal, put it into the fire, that coal, by the help of that other fire, it becomes a rage, a chunk of rage coal. Similarly, this human mind, when it is attached to God, it becomes luminous. It is bound to be luminous because God is light. That light makes our minds lighted. That is illumination. That we need to do through our meditation, through our prayer. We need to connect ourselves with God. That Krishna is going to tell us. First, he will tell us in verse 14, sorry, 15. Namam duskriti no muha prapadyante noradha maha mayaya aparhito jnana asuram bhavamashrita. They do not devote themselves to me, the evil doers, the deluded, the lowest of men, deprived of discrimination by maya and following the way of the asuras or evil doers. Krishna is telling us human life is extremely precious. But listen, these four kinds of people do not worship me. First, Dushkriti, no. Wicked, evil people. Those who always do bad work, bad works, bad karma. They do not worship me. They are so deluded. Their minds are full of anger, hatred, jealousy. With that mind, they live in this world. They have no peace of mind. They always try to do wrong to others. Destroying others, they get some kind of excitement. <laughs> they rob, rape, they kill. They say some, I think last month we saw on the television, a man kidnapped a girl, kept her in somewhere in, for many years. And then when he was caught, he went to the jail, then he hanged himself. That is Dushkritino. You know, when we read these things, when you watch television and when you read newspaper, you see the Krishna's words are connected with various kinds of people in this world. <laughs> Murha. Murha is deluded, confused, do not know whether they are doing right or wrong. Example, a man took a gun, went to naval base, killed 12 people, then police came and killed that man. They are Murha. Deluded, dumb, they do not know what I am doing. Killing people, I know, if you kill, you will be killed. If you hurt, you will be hurt. Law of karma comes very quickly. You know, and I remember in Hitobu, they say, if you do excessive good karma or excessive bad karma, the result comes within three days or three months or three years. The result comes very quickly. These people's results comes very quickly. Because it is extreme bad. Or if you do extreme good, that also result comes very quickly. If these people are in this world, Krishna is telling, Dushkriti no, evil people, mudha, deluded people, or mayaya aparito jnana. Some people are very proud. I am a great yogi. I am this, I am that. The moment pride comes, always remember, you will fall. And don't show to the spiritual life, you are walking on the sharp edge of a razor. It is very slippery path. Always watch, be watchful so that you may not fall. And always be humble. The, those who are very proud, they fall. They have moral lapses. Many yogis, many people fall that way. Why? Maya ya aparita jnana, Maya. Maya robs their knowledge. 
Do you know how does it rub? <laughs> it is in the chongi. Galina mupichetam si devi bhagavuti hi sa. Bala takrishya mohat mahamaya prajachati. Devi hi sa gunamayi. A, a divine mother watches those who are very proud, he deludes them, and then they become trapped in the net of Maya and caught. We know many political leaders, many social leaders, they do various kinds of bad karma and they get instant result. They have People, media will kill them and then he's out. That is called social death, moral death. There are various kinds of death. Physical death, moral death, spiritual death. It is another one kind of death. They cannot show their face anymore to the society. But there was one man who was running for the for the, uh, you know, for the presidency, raising money, got involved with one of our, one of his followers, and then he was divorced. But that was very proud, cutting haircut $600 or something like that. $600 haircut, because I'm going to be the president. Raising money from all of us, and cutting here $600, got involved with a girl, bass, out. His wife divorced him. That is called Maya Aparita Gana. Maya just grabbed him, very proud. You know, when I read this Gita, I see these people around me, <laughs> that how Mahamaya is working. Another, a Ashurim Bhava Ashridan, demoniacal, Knowledge, jibonical ideas. They are very proud, egotistic, and they love, they get joy torturing people. That is the way they show that I am very strong. They are like demons. That kind of people we find in this society. So Krishna says they are Naradhama. They are like the worst kind of people. They do not worship me. Very interesting. <laughs> now, he is going to tell us four kinds of people worship me. Chuturvida bhajante maam jana sukriti no arjuna artu jiggasu artharthi gyani cha bharatarshava. Four kinds of virtuous human beings worship me, O Arjuna. The distressed, the seeker of knowledge, the seeker of wealth, and the spiritually wise, O greatest among the Bharatas. Very interesting. One of the Puranas say that a human being gets human birth up to 8 to 84 lakhs, means 8,400,000 births we get a human body. 8,400,000 births we get a human body. Through evolutionary process, you know, a tree, a, a, in the tree kingdom, then animal kingdom, then birds kingdom. Akbar, they gave a vivid description that how we evolve, <laughs> which is in the Puranas. So they are trying to tell us that human life is very, very precious. And do not misuse your time. Time is running. Every day we are going toward the grave. Time is running out. Try to achieve something when you are strong physically, mentally. 
try to gain something. That, you know, our teachers used to teach us, do not misuse a minute in your life. He, the Swami, used to tell his attendants, do you know a jet plane goes every minute 10 miles, 600 miles an hour. Do not misuse your time, my boys. Achieve something, do something when you are well. In this life, time is going very fast. We are getting old every day. <laughs> Our moving mom, Brother Nukupunisha Jagabal ko says, my gargi. Eta dava aksharam gargi abhiditva. Aksharam gargi abhiditva smat lokat priti sakripanha. That man is really wretched who departs from this world without knowing God, Brahman. So, Krishna says, look, these four kinds of people worship me. First, Artho. Artho means is that man, is, that person is in danger. Please help. The danger comes from physical illness, dohik badi, mental illness, then worldly disease, natural calamities, war from other beings. Then, as I said, earthquake, rain, tornado, anything. This commentator gave a very good example. When in, in the Mahabharata, Draupadi was persecuted, ill-treated by the evil party. They are trying to take away cloth from our body. So Krishna, Draupadi holding one cloth with one hand and praying to Krishna with another hand, Lord, please help, help. God, God, God did not help. Because you, are, you did not surrender to me wholeheartedly. Still you are making your effort. Leave it. Raise both hands, Lord, I need your help. The moment Draupadi raised two hands, Krishna entered into the cloth and cloth became infinite. He was pulling, pulling, unending. So this man says, that is the way you must surrender to God. Wholeheartedly, Lord, I want you in my life. We go to the temple. with a list of prayers. Lord, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. A list of objects we need from God that we carry to the temple and we pray. Have you seen anybody say, Lord, I really want you and nothing else? Ask yourself what you ask. I want you in my life and nothing else, Lord. Few, perhaps, in this world you can see. So, Arthur, this kind of people, those who are very sick, disabled, bedridden, praying, Lord, please help, please help. This type, of, they're not bad, at least they're praying to God. Second, Jigasu. Jigasu means he has a desire to know God, inquiring about God. The Shanaka, the, the sages, Shanaka and others, Janaka, the kings, and some devotees, so Arjuna. Arjuna is asking, Jashri of Burhi, Tanme, Shish, tell me what is good for me, Lord. That is a good way to ask God. When you ask, Lord, please tell me what is good for me. I do not know. So Arjuna was, uh, was telling, please tell me what is good for me. Then Krishna gave all the instructions. So Jigasu, they are not bad, you know, they are curious to know about God, about his spiritual life. I remember, look, 
the first aphorism of the brahma sutra is athato brahma jigasa atha then atah after becoming a good student jigasa inquiry comes about brahman first you will have to be a student but what is necessary what is necessary to what is the qualifications are necessary to become a student of vedanta four qualifications first you must learn how to discriminate between the real and the unreal second dispassion for the worldly and heavenly objects third self control fourth burning desire for liberation if you have these four qualifications you are to you are you are a good student of vedanta then the vedanta teacher will teach you how to listen how to reflect and how to meditate the first verse of the avadhuta gita ishvara anugrahat punsha madhuta vasana which is the grace of god that a desire comes inside human mind to know about god lord i want to know you i want to establish relationship with you it is god's grace that desire comes hey, you people come here it is god's grace that you made a little time to come to vedanta and listen this this teachings of bhagavad gita the third group of people orthartha they want money wealth name fame power position in india some <laughs> some political leaders before election they go to the temple and pray and lord may i be elected <laughs> some people are seeking wealth do you know what are the these three people who do they belong to one group among these four groups they are praying for god these three belong to shakam upasana they worship god to feel good and ask god to fulfill my desires and this fourth one nishkam he seeks god no desire i want you in my life that person is called gani that person is a true jabuti no i want you in my life nothing else look vivekananda when he had terrible financial crisis then there is starvation at home sri ram krishna asked him you go to the mother whatever you will ask mother will give to you what did he ask he asked five things ma give me knowledge give me devotion discrimination renunciation on interrupted vision these five things we become the wanted he is a real bhakt he is a real jabuti he is a real gyan so shakam and nishka in the bhagavad bhagavatam in the 11th book there is one famous verse how does a man become god's devotee <clears throat> krishna says by chance a very worldly person heard a talk about the divine and a little interest in god grew in him or her at that time he or she is still very attached to the world attached to power or money etc but a little love of god entered into the mind he or she has not the spirit of renunciation but he or she is not over attached of also the world such a person is a candidate to the path of devotion by chance then 
Swami Rangaratanandaji Ji told a story of Rabindranath Tagore's father. There is a story of the father of the poet Rabindranath Tagore named Devendranath Tagore. He was a good scholar and a very rich landlord, Jaminjar. He was just sitting, he tells in his autobiography, I think in Darjeeling or in his estate enjoying the quiet evening, a wind brought a small piece of paper towards his feet. He just picked up that paper, read in it something which turned out to be the famous first verse of the Ishu Upanishad. He read it, became inspired by it, and his whole life changed. And that verse is, Isha Vaishavidam Sarvam Yatkinsa Jagatyam Jagat Tena Tyaktena Bhunji Thahma Grida Kaisa Siddhanam Everything in the manifested universe should be filled with the divine. This is the first line. This inspired him to conduct further studies. And he gave the Vedic background to the Brahmo Samaj movement in, of Calcutta, of which he was a leader of that after the death of Raja Ram Mohan Rai, whom he had helped in founding the movement. That is the story of Devendranath Tagore. Jodhrichaya. By chance, my, our principal of our training center told me a story. His friend, she was looking for a holy, see a holy man. So his classmate took my principal Swami, he was then in college, let us go and see a holy man. Thus he brought <coughs> Swami Bodhatmananda to Belun Mat and they saw Swami Brahmananda. And he was so impressed. Then that friend never came to Belunmat. But this Bodhatmananda joined the order and became a great Swami. Just by chance, if you have a good friend, perhaps that person brought you here and you found it beautiful place, a beautiful life, a beautiful teaching that may transform your whole life. That is the way it works. Same thing, my elder brother took me to the monastery when I was 14. Yes. I used to go every Sunday, serve the monks. That changed my whole life from the eighth grade. I'm just telling you that, you know, Something comes to your life and don't miss don't misuse that chance. If some of our devotees came through their friends, and that changed their lives. It, with that he was talking about Jadri Chaya. You do not know how Lord will attract you. In Vrindavan, there was a temple called Lahababu's temple. This Laha was the Maharaja of Paikpara. And very rich man, you know, Maharaja. He through the window, he was watching some poor people near the near the little, little, little slum area. So one little girl was telling her father, Father, the sun is about to set. Baba, Shondaji, hello. When it is evening, that family are the washermen. This man washes the clothes and then spread the clothes on the lawn and then they pick up that washed clothes and they iron and then they distribute to our homes. So this man, this little daughter is demanding, Father, Father, will you not bring those clothes which you washed in the morning and spread in the sun so that we can iron and so that we can deliver to the people? That one sentence changed this Maharaja's life. Baba, Balaji, Galo, Father, it is about to, the sun is about to set. Then this Raja was thinking, it is true. I am getting old. My time is running out. Renounce the palace. Going to Vrindavan. 
built a temple and became a mendicant. His whole life was changed. Jodhricha, you do not know. That is called Eko Bhukti. Krishna is going to tell in the next verse. Tesham Gani Nitya Yukta Eko Bhukti Vishishate Priyohi Gani No Atyartham Aham Sacha Mama Priya Of them, the Gani, the wise person, ever steadfast and fired and do with devotion to the one excels. For supremely dear am I to the Gani, and he or she also is dear to me. Tesham Gani Nitya Yukta Eko Bhukti Vishishyate. Beautiful. Gani means Tattavi. He knows God. There are two ways to know God. One way is intellectually. Intellectually, I have conviction. God exists. But I have not realized God. Then when you realize God, then it becomes different. That is called big Gani. Gani, big Gani. Vishesh Rupega. Special knowledge. As Sri Ramakrishna said, you have seen milk, but you have never drunk milk. But those who have drunk milk, they get nourishment. They get a strength. They are big Gani. That is the difference between Gani and Bigani. You know what is milk? It is white, liquid substance, comes from cows and other animals. And that's it. But if you drink the milk, you will get a strength, nourishment. That means you are a big Gani. So some people intellectually know, but spiritually, they have not yet got the real experience. So a Gani, Nitya Yukta, he's always connected. How, 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 how he is always connected? He sees Sarvam Brahmamayam Jagat. He sees God in everything, in every being. In Chandogu Upanishad, there is a mantra. They call it Shangila Vidya. Sarvam Khaluidam Brahmam Tajalan Iti Shantam Upasita. This is called Shangila Vidya. Everything is, whatever you see, everything is nothing but Brahman. Sarvam khalu idam Brahman. Tat, ja, la, on. Three words are there. From that Brahman, this whole creation evolves, which is sustained by that same pure consciousness. And finally, this whole creation merges into that consciousness. Shutanam, why are you so upset? Why are you... So much worried and full of anxiety. Forget it. Just be shanto. Be quiet. Learn how to quiet the mind. Upashita. This is the way you worship me. This world is not yours, not mine. This world belongs to God. We also belong to God. That connection we will have to make with him. You are my father, you are my mother, you are my all in all. That is called eco bhukti. Only one kind of relationship, continuous relationship with God. Well, what about my husband, my children? Do you know how do you look at them? They gave to you. God gave them to you. Oh, Amar husband, my husband, my children. <laughs> in India, do you know what? In village I have seen, if you ask a woman, is it, is it, is it your son or daughter? Oh no, oh, God gave me. They connect the children with God. It is, they came from my body, no doubt, but God gave me. I am the caretaker of God's children. God gave me. They do not like to connect their I, ego, with the, with the children or the family. They connect themselves with God. Eko Bhakti Priyo Hi Gani No Tarta Maham Sam. Do you know what? He sees that my Ishto, my beloved God in every being, 
example. But as you have seen in the Best Buy or some other places, there are 20 or 30 television sets. Some big, some small, some various sizes, TV sets. What is going on? Same cardinal play is going on. Just the only cardinal, cardinal, cardinal. All, all TV sets are also showing cardinals, cardinal, cardinals. <coughs> Same thing, this devotee, this Gani, he sees all, he, all these are all the, all the, you, every one of you is a television set. <laughs> <laughs> so if I am a Gani, I shall see, you know, Lord Sri Ramakrishna or Buddha or Brahman, I can see. Each is one television set, that she is another television set. So I see my beloved Lord in every being. That is called Gani, that is called Eko Bhakti. Which is very, very interesting. I was thinking, you know, how then when you have this kind of experience, do you know what will happen? You cannot hate anybody. Tato na bijugupshate. Only your love will come for each one and all. That is called true Vedanta, Shad Bhavuti Brahma Darshan. That is the culmination of Vedantic experience. You see God in everything, in everything. That is called the kingdom of heaven is within you. What Jesus says, kingdom of heaven is within you, that is in Vedantic experience. Shadbhuvhutya Brahma Darshan. Brahman manifests in everything. At that time, the whole world changes. You will be completely free from problems. That is our goal. It breaks all barriers. You are my enemy. He is my friend. He is this. All enemy, friend, everything disappears. Atma, Priyo. It's beautiful. Priyo, you are very beloved to me. Why? Because my Atman is dwells in you. The Atman which is inside me, same Atman is inside you. That is the reason I love you. This is a beautiful experience. The Swami mentioned about a true devotee, Prahlada. When Krishna asked Vishnu, asked him, ask a boon from me, Prahlada, you are my devotee. I'll be happy to give you anything you ask. Prahlada said, I'm not a businessman to trade in love and bhakti. My bhakti, my devotion is one pointed. I don't ask anything in return. He used the word bonik. Bonik means merchant or a treasure in bhakti. As Swamiji says, I always remind you, love is a young triangle. The first angle of love triangle is love knows no fear. Where there is fear, there is no love. Second, angle of the love triangle is love knows no bargain. I shall give you a million dollars, will you love me? No, it does not work that way. Love cannot be bought. It comes spontaneously from the heart. That is called love for love's sake. I love you for the sake of love, without any expectation. Here some people, <laughs> oh, the, that person is showing a little love, affection to me, but that person has motive. It is a motiveless love. Then Krishna continued, Udana sarve sarva evaite gyani tu atma eva me matam asthita sai yukta atma mameva unuttamam gotim. Noble indeed are they all, but the gyani or wise person I regard as my very self. For with the mind steadfast, he or she is established in me alone as the supreme goal. 
Krishna says, you know, those who have shakam, when they are praying to me to fulfill their desires, they are also great. They are not inferior. But Gani, I have a little special relationship with him. He is very dear to me. And we you know, you know, superlative degree, comparative degree, positive, you know, positive degree, great, greater, greatest, like that, you know. So he is the greatest. They are also good, good, no doubt. Udara. Udara means, actually Udara means very generous, very good. Dear Swami quoted a verse, Vayam nijo paro beti ganana loguchi tasam udara charitanam tu vasudeiva kutumbakam. This is, this is one soul that is another's, is the attitude of the small-minded. But to the noble-minded, the whole world is one's own family. Everybody is my relative. <coughs> relative in Sanskrit is called Atmiyo. That means my, I might have connection with my Atman with you, with every one of you. So you people are my relative. That is called Udhara Charitam. That is the sign of a noble soul. He has no enemy. Ajata Shatru. His enemy has not been born. He is Udhara. That he is talk, Krishna is talking about. They are very nice. They are also dear to me, but Jani is a little special. Why is special? Do you know why? You have, you have a big company. You have some workers part-time and some workers full-time. So Gani is the full-time worker. Our other three groups, you know, they have part-time. They are some minds sometimes in the family, sometimes in God. So they are part-time workers. <laughs> that is the way I look, look at these people. I remember in training center, we were studying high Vedanta. Do you know what our principal Swami told me? You are a grihastha. You are a householder. I go, no, Maharaj, I am a monk. No, you are a householder. I go, no, I am a monk. No, you are a householder. He emphasized again and again that you are a householder. Then he explained, do you know why, who is a householder? What is house? This body is the house. Do you live in the body or not? Tell me. Yes, I live in the body. When they ring the bell, do you not go to the lounge, to the dining hall for food? I tell him, yes, I do. That means you are living in the body. Correct? You give food, water to your body. That means you are living in the body, correct? Yes. <coughs> if you live in the Atman, you transcend the body. Whether you live in the Atman or not, you will be a real sannasi, real monk, if you all the time live in the Atman. That is the way we understand this kind of thing, you know, part-time, full-time. So most people, you know, we are part-time. Part <laughs> Those who are full-time workers, you depend on them more than the part-time workers. My business, you know, I need full-time, very good manager, good accountant, you know. I need full-time people. I count on those people. Those Shakam people, those who have pray God to fulfill their desires, they're all part-time devotees. And those who only Full-time, concentrate on God, they're full-time. But how can I be a full-time devotee? Krishna says, Bhūnāṁ janmanāṁ ante ganamān ban prapadyate, prapadyate, vāsudeva sarvamiti, samātmā sudur lava. Beautiful verse. How can I be a full-time lover of God? Could you teach me? 
I want to love God and God alone, nothing else. That Krishna is talking about. Bahunam Janmanamam Te. At the end of many births, the man or woman of jnana or wisdom takes refuge in me, realizing that all this is Vasudeva, Krishna. But the most innermost self of all, very rare is that great soul. Bahunam Janmanamante, which is not one birth. Don't think you people came here today from the outcome of your this life. No way. You have gone through many, many lives to develop devotion and love for God. That is the reason you are here. You are not ordinary people. One of our swamis used to tell us. If you are bitten by a big cobra, you will die. If you are bitten by a small cobra, you will die. Why? Poison is the same. <clears throat> so this devotees, you have love. That love forced you to come here today to listen to the Gita. That is the most precious thing in the human life, love for God. It does not generate all of a sudden. After many, many births, I am disgusted with this world. Now let me turn my mind toward God, which is God's grace. That we have, as I said, Isharo Nugrat Pungshamad Vasana the first verse of the Abhudhuti Gita. It is God's grace that God turns our minds toward God. He, the powerful magnet is there, as Sri Ramakrishna said, but our heart, mind, full of dirt, thick cover of mud, so the magnet cannot attract. When through our tears and prayers, this mind is washed, washed away, then magnet attracts. At that time, you will feel, oh, if I do not go to Vedanta, I feel uncomfortable. You know, the Brahmins, they have a trishanda, three times they repeat the Gayatri mantra. Without repeating mantra, they will not drink any water even. And that becomes one with the system. Oh, I must repeat mantra. That becomes the part of your life. That is the way we develop this kind of longing, yearning for God. That Krishna says, Ganaman man prapadyate Vasudeva sarvamiti God is everything. God is inside me, outside me. That says, we, we read with the Jishabha Samidam, I already say, cover everything with God consciousness. After repeated births, struggling, struggling to perfect oneself in the final life, one realizes the supreme truth that everything is God. But such a devotee is very rare. That is the language here. So Mahatma, he or she is a Mahatma. Shudur Lava, very difficult to come across. He is a great soul. It is very high stage of perfection. But everywhere there have been somebody or the other to achieve this perfection, just like what we find among those climbing the Mount Everest. Only few have succeeded so far. Similarly, there is a Mount Everest of spiritual experience, seeing the Lord in everything, inside and outside. And that is what the shloka says. It is a journey. One Swami gave a beautiful analogy. When you go to Kedar Bodri, 
on food. Sometimes hop, chadai. Sometimes down, utrai. When you go utrai, when you are going down, that, that doesn't mean you are going wrong, it is wrong. That utrai is also the part of that road. Chadai, utrai. Up and down. That is the way spiritual life moves to reach the destination. It does not flow continuously the same way. Sometimes dark night of the soul, mind becomes, is not working. But never give up your spiritual disciplines. You like it or don't like it, swallow like quinine mixture. <laughs> It will remove your malady. <laughs> when you practice a spiritual life, you gain something by the time life is over. You are dead and gone, but your samaskaras or innate tendencies in your subtle body remain. Then you get another birth, <coughs> continuing the struggle, building up something more. Therefore, Lord says, Bhunam Jarmanam Munte. It takes many, many lives. Spiritual life, which is really a challenge. But does it get, does it, do you get any result from by practicing spiritual disciplines? That is the question. You go to work, on our basis you get some money. Hey, I $15 or $20 per hour. At the end of the day, your the employer. <clears throat> will will give you money. In a spiritual life, I am practicing japa meditation, I am studying, I am listening, all these things. Will it bring any result or not? That is the question. It does in a subtle way. Sometimes we do not perceive it. Let me give an example. In our part of the country, during fall, there is a shishir, dew drops fall. The grass, flower bed, flowers, trees, plants, you will find dew drops, crystal colored dew drops all over. You walk with barefooted on the grass, your feet will be wet. Then what happens? The sun rises. These dew drops evaporate. They evaporate. We do not see it. But whole night, the dew drops nourish the trees, plants, flowers, fruits, grass bed. They get nourishment. But daytime you go and see, there is no, it is no, no dew drops, no wet, it is dry. Unperceptibly, these dew drops nourish the nature. Same thing in the spiritual life. You do not see it. But inside, it will change your whole nature. It will make you perfect. That Krishna is talking about that Gyanavan man prapuddhati. Again, Gyani and Jivuti both are the same. If you are, want to be a Gyani, you will have to be a Jivuti. And if you want to be a Jivuti, you will have to be a Gyani. How? If I do not know you, I cannot love you. And if I want to love you, I want to, I will have to know you. It goes, it goes this way. Oh, Gani, Gani. Gary Gani is a great devotee. He has full-time love with his Atman or the chosen deity. Really, I, I cannot love you if I do not know you. And if I want to know you, I will have to love you. That's why it is interconnected that Krishna is talking about. At that time, you understand God is everything. We are nobodies. I remember Swami Pancho Premananda was scolding a monk. And that monk says, Maharaj, Sri Ramakrishna made you something. 
That is the reason you people are great. Suryananda Swami Premananda said, Sri Ramakrishna made us nobodies. He smashed our egos. We are his children. We are his instruments. Sri Ramakrishna is all in all. That Vasudeva Masarvamiti, Krishna, God, pervades, dwells in us, in everybody. Love all. Thank you. Tvameva mata cha pita tvameva Tvameva bandusya sakha tvameva Tvameva vidya drabinam tvameva Tvameva sarvam mama deva deva Lord, thou art my mother, thou art my father, thou art my friend, thou art my companion, thou art my wealth, and thou art my learning, thou art my all in all, O Lord. Om Shantihi, Shantihi, Shantihi. Peace, 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 my God.